tonight and turn to page number 30. Everyone stand, turn to page number 30. We'll sing the first and the last verse of nothing but the blood. Page number 30. Stand and sing. Remind us tonight of your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, page number 22, first and fourth verse, to are you washed in the blood? Page number 22. lay down his life on the cross. All right, Brother Manny over here has got a nice microphone. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now you say, I'm scared of that microphone. Don't be, because if you don't use that microphone, those people watching online won't be able to hear a thing you say. So don't be afraid of it. It won't bite. Manny will bite you before the microphone will, okay? <laughs> that I promise you, all right? So if you, the Lord's done something good for you and blessed you, uh, raise your hand, he'll bring you the microphone, and let's have a few testimonies tonight. Who'll be first? All the way in the back, man, and you got to exercise. This is Brother Evan Lewis. Oh, I'm 
I just want to say I'm thankful for my uh, church family, allowing to be able to be coming to church and just learning more about him. And uh, just thankful that we get the opportunity to be able to come to church. Uh, some people don't even... Some people get killed for coming to, like, trying to go to the church, and I'm just thankful that we're in America and we can do this freely and pray freely. Thank you, Brother Evan. All right, who's next? This is not time. Look, we cut the lights off. This is not time to be bashful. Come on. Who's next? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. All right, Brother. Who are you? Sean Patterson. That's, me. That's Sean with the S-H. Um, I just want to say I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful uh, to be here in front of all of you. Uh, I just want to say that I love uh, love you all, and um, I'm very thankful for you, and again, for this church and uh, for our pastor, um, and his continued prayers. Um, whenever um, I'm going through something or or if I need something, he always sends me a text message asking me how can he pray for me, and he's been praying for me. So I just want to say I'm thankful for that, and also for all of you for your prayers. Um, and I think that's all I got. <laughs> you know. Thank you, Brother Sean. All right, somebody else. All the way back there, Brother Manny. Sister Dakota. I want to thank the Lord for my salvation most of all and that he was willing to die for me. I thank you all for allowing us to be a part of this church. It's been such a blessing to us. And most, uh, my, one of my favorite verses is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. I need that every day. Amen. Sister Pakoda's a special blessing. I was didn't get in bed till late on Sunday night, and I'd gotten into bed and got to go to sleep. And uh, I rolled over about once a night. I'd done my rollover, so I knew I was in for the long haul. All of a sudden, four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you got a phone. You know what that means. I'm saying, oh me. So I got up and I. Wandered to my office and got the phone looking for bad news. That's just normal what you think. Somebody calls or texts you in the middle of the night, it's bad news. My sister Pakoda, she's praising the Lord at 4 o'clock in the morning. And uh, she got me up to praise the Lord with her. Say amen. Nothing wrong with that. I am praying for Brother Pakoda. <laughs> she gets him up every morning at 4 o'clock, Lord help him. That's all I can say. <laughs> all right, somebody else. Praise the Lord. Oh, Diane's already on the ball. This is Miss Diane Mills. <laughs> I want to thank the Lord for my salvation also and for our church. It's, it's something that we should never take for granted because I talk to a lot of people every day that talk about their church, and it, it's not what we have, and I am so thankful for our church. I'm thankful for our youth. They're such a blessing. And um, then I'm thankful for the choir, and uh, we're looking forward to Sunday. And I'm just so thankful that God is in the midst of everything. And even when we're going through trials in our lives, uh, He's always there. He's in the midst. And I thank Him for the peace that passeth understanding. Amen. Brother Earl called me Sunday afternoon. He called me Monday. He called me Tuesday. <laughs> He's still shouting. So I was sitting at my desk this morning doing some stuff, and my phone went, Bing! it was Earl Clarkson this time. And all he said was, well, glory. And he had an emoji of a smiley face with a, with a I've never seen it before, with a halo around it. I don't know if that meant I was an angel or he was an angel or what, but I know he was glorifying God. He had such a good time Sunday. Amen. All right, somebody else. Got two. We'll take this one first. We'll take the bionic woman first, and then we'll take the grocery shopper next. <laughs> All right. The couponer. Excuse me. I'll get it right here in a minute. I'm going to stay seated, but I just want to thank the Lord for all his blessings. He's been so good to me, and I just thank him for doctors and nurses that have compassion on you. I just thank him that he brought me through this surgery, and I just praise his name that I'm doing 
better and better each day. Some mornings is not the best, <laughs> but throughout the day it gets better. And I thank him so much for E.T. and Deb. They have been a jewel to me. And I love all of y'all just like I love them. And I just want to thank the Lord for saving me, keeping me safe, hearing an answer prayer. And I'm just looking forward to Sunday. I just praise the Lord for everything. All right, Sister Brian. Um, I am so thankful for my salvation and just a wonderful Bible preaching church and for the youth group, the youth leaders, and just how much they love them, the kids, and uh, the so many activities and things that they do, and I'm just very thankful for all of them. All right. If y'all sing good, I'll let you sit down. You gonna sing good? Yes. All right. The only one got to stand up is Lurch. Take your hymn books and turn to page number 23. Brother Jamie is gonna lead you in the first and fourth verse. So there's power in the blood. Let's sing good now. This is round two. All right, who'll be next? Who wants to give a testimony? Sister Janice Hodges. I'd like to thank the Lord for my salvation, and I'd like to thank the Lord for answered prayers for Bill Snow Sunday, that you all prayed, we all prayed for him. He's still sick, but at least he's home. Amen. And that wouldn't be, happen, wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for our Lord and Savior, Jesus That's Christ. Right. Amen. All right, thank you, Sister Janice. Who'll be next? You might as well go and do it, because if you go home and don't, the Lord's going to get you. All right, these two ladies, one than the other. <laughs> All right, this is Sister Christa McBride. I just want to thank the Lord first for my salvation. Thank him for this church, for a preacher who stands on the word. He doesn't care if he steps on your toes and makes you mad, and I'm glad for that, because uh, that's what we need. And we need the conviction, and I'm just so thankful that God died for us, even though he knew what he was going to have to go through. He knew all of our sins before we even do them. But if we come to him, he'll forgive us anyway. And I just want to do more for him. It's been on my heart. I just want to do more for him. Don't know what he wants me to do, but I'm sure he'll let me know. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. All right, this is Angie Moore. Um, I'm thankful for my salvation, and also I'm thankful for answered prayers as well. Um, Toby went through a lot the past year with open heart surgery. I mean, he recovered from it great, um, and that's the prayer is 100% reason. Uh, he got injured at work. He bounced back from that. So definitely all the prayers that went up, I'm thankful for, and my wonderful church family. Um, I love everyone so much, and like Christy was saying, I just don't think I can do enough for the Lord, and I want to be here to keep doing it. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Angie. All right, who's next? All right. I'd like to thank the Lord for my salvation and also for getting me through what I had to go through with my ear and it's healed up 
good. I just have to maybe go back for revision, but we'll see how that goes. But I just want to thank the Lord for getting me through that. Amen. She did it so quick I didn't get to tell you it was Angel Underwood. She jumped and grabbed that microphone. Just jumped to it. All right, who'll be next? You're going to regret it when you get home. So I wish I would give a test month. going to be too late then. Let's do it now. With Mike all the way in the back. He's a full-blooded back row Baptist. He's been on the back row the whole 25 years I've been here. <coughs> he don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Diane does. <laughs> when we first started this church, preacher Jimmy, he was kind of small, skinny, short, meek, mild, I got in the pulpit. It was an old boy that he had met time or two. Preacher Jimmy come out of the shop one day. He said, let's go visit him. I said, okay. So we get in his car and we go up and visit the old boy. Now this guy is wicked. He bragged about how many preachers he'd run off of his property. <laughs> So we get there, and we go in this little shop, and we talk to him a while. <clears throat> we haven't said a word about church. So finally, we, after a little bit, we got ready to leave. Preacher Jimmy turned around and looked at him. He says, uh, somehow we'd like for you to come and visit us at church. The old boy looked at him, and I was standing beside him, and he pointed straight to me. He said, well, first the old boy says, well, I'm a heathen. Preacher Jimmy says, well, all the heathens sit on the back row. <laughs> the old boy looked straight at me, pointed at me. Where does he sit? Preacher Jimmy looked at him, didn't hesitate. Looked at him and said, oh, he sits behind the back pew. <laughs> And I've been here ever since. <laughs> and I'd like to thank the Lord tonight. If we come into this season to remember and celebrate what Jesus Christ did for us. Taking and beating the breaking of the bones and then the shedding of his blood. He didn't have to do that. And there's no way to put in words how much I thank him for that. And I'll never forget that. And he's the only reason I'm still alive today. And I thank him for that. And he has something for me to do. For what? I don't know. But I'm still hanging on and hanging in. And all I can do is trust him. And I thank him tonight for this church. I thank him for what he's allowed me to do in this church. Not much, and I haven't done a thing. I've just done what he wanted me to do. I thank him tonight for our pastor. And I thank him so much for what this church stands for. It's like a preacher said, it's standards. And it's not our standards, it's God's standards. That's right. And I thank him for that tonight. Amen. All right, going to take one more. Who's going to get the final call? Um, I want to thank the Lord for my salvation um, and for saving me. Um, I was talking to Esten last night about how um, the devil has been getting in my head and everything and lying and um, I was just like it's, it's so unfair and mm -hmm. but I know that he's only there because I'm living for the Lord and um, and it's all worth it. I'm, the Lord has blessed me so much with my wonderful siblings, my um, beautiful niece and nephew, my wonderful church family. I'm just so thankful for all of you and. Um, I just don't know where I'd be without the Lord. So, yeah. All right. 
Let's stand your feet and take your hymn books and turn to page number 19. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. First and last verse, page 19, there is a fountain. Sunday a blessing. Amen. And God, this Sunday is the cantata. Following Sunday, the wild man from Alabama by way of Hartwell, Georgia. Uh, I'm going to set him up for success. I think I'm going to get in hands of glory to sing that song again Sunday. And I want to see him chase Jackson Snow down the aisle. I believe it'll happen. I believe John Mitchell will be right behind him coming down the aisle. I really do. So let's be faithful in our giving tonight. And uh, Brother Manny, you slip up to the platform, please, sir, and ask God to bless the offering tonight, please, sir. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for all the uh, uh, the beautiful testimonies, Lord. Thank you for bringing us back into your house, Lord. We ask that you uh, bless us often. Let it go to further your kingdom, Lord. I ask that you be with the remainder of this month and all the preachers and the and the revivals that we got coming up, Lord. I ask that you be with the preacher uh, tonight, Lord. Give him the right words to say that you, uh, that you might bless our hearts, Lord. Uh, Lord, and most importantly, Lord, if anybody here doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, I ask that they get that right before it's eternally too late. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. a hand tonight. Take your Bibles for just a moment tonight and turn to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 and verse 14. All communion services are reunion services. We gather together to remember what the Lord has done for us to stir up in you and I that thankfulness of what he's done for us, to remind us where he brought us from and where we could have been if it hadn't been for him saving our soul. Luke chapter 22, verse 14 says, And when the hour was come, he sat down, 
and the twelve apostles with him. Notice here he sat down. We see here the Lord Jesus sitting at a table with his disciples for a time of serious fellowship. Now the reason we dim the lights is we want everybody to be serious. We want everybody to reflect. We want anything else to take your mind away from the subject matter at hand. And when Jesus sat down at the Lord's table, the Last Supper, it was a serious time for him and his disciples. And you say, well, those were his disciples. Well, what do you think you are? You're his disciples. This is a serious time tonight to look into the Word of God and then gather around the table and be thankful for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. The hour was come as a statement of that seriousness. <clears throat> the hour had come for Jesus to suffer and die on the cross, to be beaten beyond recognition of a man, to be found guilty of things he had not done, and then go to the cross and take all of our sins upon himself, which he certainly had not committed. It's a very serious time. There's today, in a service like this, there's little time for jest. There's little time, uh, there is a time for singing, there is a time for encouragement, there's a time for jest, but tonight's a time of reflection, a time to be still and know that he's God and realize what he's done for us. There also comes a time when you must be ready to be still. You must purposely be still and, and, and look to God Block out everything else in your mind. These were Jesus' best men. And he was about to expel one of them for being a betrayer. That's the last thing you and I want to be marked as tonight as a betrayer. We don't want to be like Judas. We want to be one of his best men. Say amen. amen. Somebody asked me one time, says, Preacher, why don't you have communion on Sunday morning? Because most people there aren't serious. It's the reason I cried to serious. It's the reason I cried means business with God. And it's a serious thing to partake of the Lord's Supper unworthily. None of us are worthy. None of us are worthy. But it's a serious thing to take lightly the coming to the table of the Lord. We've got to take that seriously. And 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup uh, of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. The answer is not to say, well, I'm not going to partake of the Lord's Supper. I'm not ready to get right. No, the answer is get right and take, take, partake of the Lord's Supper. That's the answer. Don't put off to tomorrow what you ought to do today. You don't know what a day may bring forth. You don't know what's going to happen. And as we sit here tonight, we must look into our lives and honestly examine ourselves to make sure that the enemy has not crept into our lives, deceived us, and caused us to betray the one who gave all for us. Boy, he gave everything for us. We ought to give our best for him. We all make mistakes. If you're breathing, you have made a mistake. You will make a mistake. That's life. But I want to tell you something. We don't have to dwell there. We don't have to stay down. Say amen. First John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This should be our prayer in Psalms 26, 2. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins in my heart. Lord, show me everything I need to confess. Show me everything I need to, uh, to repent of. I was listening to a new song today by the Freemans. And uh, it's entitled The Glory. And boy, it was a pointed song. I got my toes stepped on in the first two verses. Uh, first two verses of the song say, if there's sin in the camp, there can't be revival. And that's a true statement. We want revival. This is the place to start it tonight by confessing our sins. So as we're sitting here, as they sat there some 2,000 plus years ago, the next subject is suffering. Look at Luke twenty two fifteen, And he said unto them with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you 
before I suffer. He said, I want to sit down with y'all before I take the path I've got to go on. I want to say some things to you before I go. I want to do some things with you before I go and fulfill the will of God. I, I want to be a blessing to you before I go be a blessing to you. Make sense? And so the word desire, with desire I have desire here means a longing. You should have come to church tonight with a longing to meet with God, a longing to have fellowship with him. It's not about coming to see your friends. It's not about coming to have a good time. We come to church to meet with the Lord. We ought to have that longing and desire. He longs and desires to meet with us. If you look into the Greek, <clears throat> desire means a longing for and a desire. And in the beginning, this word is used in conjunction with verse 14. And the phrase, the hour was come. This timing was important. If he had done this a year earlier, or a month earlier, it wouldn't have been the right time and the same impact that he was going to have that night at the Lord's table. Time ends everything with God. And we need to be on his timetable and make sure we're on his schedule and we're not late or we're not early, but we're right where we ought to be. Jesus was right where he was supposed to be. The timing was perfect. His desire or longing was not for something forbidden, but his longing and desire was for something precious, something powerful, something pertinent, and it was important to him. The disciples might have tried to stop the Lord's death on the cross, and that wasn't God's plan. So timing had to be right. The disciples had already been fighting over who was the most important in the kingdom, and they had his ruling and reigning before the suffering and dying, they'll never be ruling and reigning until suffering comes first. And if he suffered, guess what? And we're his children. We're suffering too. We've got to suffer and serve God. They, this Passover was a specific Passover of all Passovers. They'd celebrated it every year for years. But this was the real Passover. This was the last Passover. This was the real Passover lamb. And as a matter of fact, it was the real Passover of all times. And a part of the price for our sin at this Passover, as a lamb had to suffer and die for every Passover before, the lamb of God was going to suffer and die this time. Do you understand he died for you? He took those beatings for you. He took the lies for you. He took the scourging for you. He took the nails for you. He took the spit for you. He thought that much of you. That's how much he desired to redeem your soul, that there was no suffering too great that God wouldn't take through his son to save your soul. Greater love is no man than this, and he lay down his life for his friends. 1 Peter 3, 18, For Christ hath once suffered for what? Sins the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. That's talking about Sunday morning at the resurrection. Tonight we're serious. Sunday morning we're going to rejoice. Amen. We're going to rejoice in the resurrection. Tonight we're serious about the suffering. Hebrews 9, 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of of himself. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. He had to suffer for you and I. Now we think we're not supposed to suffer, and that's foolish. Every suffering has a purpose. Every pain has a promise. And we have to trust God that through these sufferings we go through in this life, that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, he had sat, he had talked about suffering. Now, let's look at the word say in verse 16. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until I am fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Jesus, again, was pointing out God's perfect plan. God was a, has a certain order and a particular way and a specific time frame that he has to have things done. 
And if we go rogue, we, we're not going to be in his plan. We're not going to mess his plan up. I've got news for you. None of us are going to stop God from doing what he wants to do. But we sure can stop ourselves from being a part of it. I don't know about you. I want to be a part of what God's doing. Amen? I want to be a part of his work. It's important to Jesus that he do the will of his Father in heaven. John 4, 34. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And finish his work. John 6, 38. For I'm come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I was watching TV last night, and I heard within 30 minutes on one channel, people say, do what you want to do. Live the way you want to live. Fulfill your dreams. Please yourself. That has got nothing to do with the will of God. Matter of fact, it's the total opposite. The world is preaching, do your thing. The Bible is saying, do his thing. Follow him. Trust him. You say, well, doing my thing is a whole lot more fun than doing God's thing. Yeah, but what you're going to do is not going to last as long as what you do for God. What you do for God is going to be eternal. Say amen. amen. There's a purpose for this thing. There's a purpose. And, and we have to trust him to do his will. John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which, he seeth, uh, which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have, what's those two words? Everlasting life and that I will raise him up at the last day. Can we say tonight, sitting here before the Lord's table, that we've done everything that the Lord has sent us to do, or have we faltered along the way? Well, if we have, we've got to claim 1 John 1, 9, and he'll forgive you. If you repent, that means turn from your sin, turn back to the Savior. Don't be sorry you got caught, be sorry you did it at all. And he'll forgive you. This is the reason for the Lord's table, to examine ourselves, to have a checkup. Today I had to call the doctor. My doctor retired. I guess I wore him out. <laughs> he retired. He retired. So I got to get me a new doctor. And they, they were going to tell me at this new place who my doctor was going to be. I didn't like who I saw. So I called and picked my own doctor. Say amen. And, and I set my appointment up and got it set because you've got to have a checkup every six months or if you go to CVS and you ain't had that checkup, they're not going to give you your blood pressure pills. And I don't feel like dying. So I made the appointment. I'm going to have a checkup and I'm going to take my blood pressure pills so I can antagonize y'all a little while longer. <laughs> say amen or oh me. Don't say oh me, you hurt my feelings. But here's the point. Tonight's a checkup. This is our checkup so we can do our best. So we can do our best for him. And the next word is served. Look at verse 17. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this as divided among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine unto the kingdom of God shall come. Jesus was not there to be served. He was there to serve. He was a servant setting an example for a table full of servants that were going to have to go on past him after he died, after he was buried, after he rose again, after he ascended to heaven. They were going to have to continue on serving and living for God. And so he took and gave and said, now this, uh, he, he was not partaking himself, he was the offering. Did you ever notice that? He didn't partake of the Lord's Supper because he was the offering. He was the body. He was the blood. He was the sacrifice. So he didn't partake of the Lord's Supper. It was the servants that did because he was dying for them. He was serving them. He's already served you. He's already served me. Now it's time for us not to serve our flesh, but to serve him. Say amen. And so uh, there could be no coming kingdom of God if he did not die for them and become the bread and cup for them. He was the servant and he was the sacrifice. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. And walk in love as Christ who hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering, a sacrifice of, to God for a sweet smelling savor. He gave, literally gave his life for you. Physically. All he's asked you to do is give your life to him spiritually. And he give you the Holy Spirit to help you. He gave you the word of God to sustain you. Hey, what more could we ask for? We can do this. Say amen. We can do this. Philippians 2, 7. 
but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, and he was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. That's what you've got to do tonight. Get over yourself and humble yourself and became obedient unto death. You don't have to die here tonight, but you've got to die to self. You've got to give up your ways, your wants, your wishes. Don't listen to Hollywood. Don't listen to Washington, D.C. Listen to the Word of God and surrender to Him and to serve Him and be obedient to Him, even the death who died the death of the cross. The Bible says, take up your cross and follow me. That's what you've got to do tonight. We've all got crosses to bear. We've all got sins which does so easily beset us. Tonight, let's lay those aside. Pick up the cross and follow the Lord. He was our substitute. Look at verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Don't forget what he done. Do you know why we backslide on God and we give up on God and we go back on God? We forget what he's done for us. We forget he was the only one who could do it for us. And we forget how badly we need him. Jesus had to die to identify with man and take every man's place. Do you understand? He understands who you are. He understands what you're facing. He was a man as you were a man, but yet without sin. He was a man. Breaking this bread and passing it around to everyone was his way of personally identifying with them. He was going to pay their sin debt individually and he was going to pay their sin debt personally. He did it for us individually, one-on-one. -on -one. Now, Ken, skip down to verse 20. He was a substitute, and he shed. Likewise, also the cup after, the, after our supper, saying, This cup is the what? The New Testament in my blood, which was shed for you. The blood was the price the pure blood for the tainted blood of men. There had to be pain. There had to be punishment for man to see physically and understand the pain and the suffering God felt when man fell into sin and broke fellowship with God. I don't believe Adam and Eve knew how bad they broke God's heart when they done it. I think they understood a little bit when he forced them out of the Garden of Eden. But I don't think they ever really understood how badly they broke God's heart because he could no longer walk with them in the cool of the evening. He could no longer be with them in the Garden of Eden that he created for them and him to spend time together. But I'm sure as life went on and Cain killed Abel, they began to realize what it meant to lose somebody you loved. God lost Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve lost Cain, uh, Abel because Cain killed him. Then they lost Cain because he became a nomad. They lost both of their boys. Not just one. Lost both of them. That broken fellowship. Tonight, sin is what breaks our fellowship. And tonight, if we confess that sin, our fellowship will be restored. They had to know at that table what, what God's heart was. And that, that day at the Garden of, of, Gethsem, uh, the Garden of Eden, the devil had won, but the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was going to win. You see, steady companionship was broken in the Garden of Eden. Sweet fellowship was forsaken. Sacred love was stolen. And sad eyes were swollen. The eyes, God cried, I'm sure, that day. When people die, have you ever stopped to think about this? that person who you love who died, that steady companionship is broken. That sweet fellowship is forsaken. That sacred love is stolen. And sad eyes are swollen. God had to give us an example of what he felt in the Garden of Eden. And death is that example. See, by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men. For all have sinned. All have sinned. Jesus wants us to understand how he felt when man spiritually died and how badly it broke his heart. It hurt him bad enough. Listen to this. It hurt him bad enough that he was willing to do anything to make it right. And he didn't even do the wrong. 
That's real love. Say amen. As we have this invitation, first of all, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I'm not talking about joining a church. I'm not talking about doing good works. I'm not talking about being baptized. I'm talking about there was a time you realized you were a sinner on the way to hell and you need somebody to rescue you before you got there. That's the day you really get saved. Amen? If you're truly not born again, you need to get saved tonight. If you are saved, tonight we need to confess our sins. We need to come and just tell God how much we love him. Ask him to, to show us the things between us and him and make it right tonight before we go to this table and we partake of the Lord's Supper so we can leave here tonight closer to him, empowered by him, and evangelist for him. Say amen. amen. And we'll leave here being the servants we ought to be. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Tonight, first of all, if there's one here that doesn't know you're saved, you say, Preacher, I sure would like to get saved tonight. I don't know if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. But I'd like to. I'd like to know for sure that I have a home in heaven. My sins are forgiven. I realize tonight how much God really loved me by sending his son. I never realized that before. But I realize it tonight. And I need to be saved. I will not come to you. I'll not embarrass you. I'll not call you by name. Or is there somebody here tonight say, Preacher, pray for me. I need to be saved. I'm not sure I'm saved tonight. Preacher, pray for me. Would you slip your hand up so I can pray for you? Anyone that way in this building? I'm not sure if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. But I'd like to know for sure that I have a home in heaven. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. But I have kind of forgotten. I've forgotten how much you love me. I've kind of walked away from him. I've kind of forgotten how much the price it paid him to stay close to me. I've forgotten how much he loved me. And I haven't loved him like he loved me. But tonight I want to make things right with God. I've got some things between me and God I want to confess. I want to forsake. I want to get up fresh and clean and ready for a new start as a Christian. I've got things I need to confess. Maybe tonight you need to come pray for someone you love to be saved. Maybe you need to come tonight and just pray because Satan's so hard on you to make you fall back into sin that you need the grace of God to touch your life and give you strength to say no and stay close to God. That's what this altar's for. And tonight when that invitation's played, come, do business with God. Listen to his voice. Answer his call. Father, take this invitation tonight. Lord, bless each and every person to come and take care of whatever needs they have. Lord, if they need someone to pray with them, uh, Lord, we, Lord, Brother Manny's here to pray for them tonight. If not, Lord, they can come to this altar and come directly to you and talk to you, confess sins, pray for their loved ones, ask for help and grace and strength in the time of need. And Lord, help us get ready to meet you at the table tonight. In Jesus' name. Stand